last but not least, uh, we have a very exciting <coughs> presenter from Boomi. And just a few words about Boomi. Uh, we've been also tracking Boomi for a good part of over the last year. And one of the interesting pain points, I mean, I don't want to steal too much of Bob's thunder, but if any of you have had issues of dealing with legacy data and various types of applications, whether they're on-premise or whether they're in SaaS applications, you know, in the 90s, you had all these different type of middleware vendors who were dealing with custom professional services to kind of do these point-to-point -point data integrations. And I never in my wildest dreams imagined that, you know, at this time we would have something like Boomi that really allows you, with no sort of real technical background, being able to do point-to-point -point applications so that you don't have to rip and replace, and you can ultimately get a lot more productivity and connect applications that are on the cloud with stuff that are SaaS applications. And just a little anecdote, uh, we actually, I had a good fortune of going to the Dreamforce conference, which was, I guess, last fall. And if any of you have gone there and you're interested in SaaS in the cloud, I highly recommend you go there. There were how many people there at that conference? 19,000. 19,000. And it just shows you like the day and night difference between New York and, and, San Francisco, and, and, the, and the Valley. And people are really, really passionate about cloud and SaaS. And it's an amazing, amazing uh, conference. And I, I, you know, one of the best uh, after parties was thrown by <laughs> by Bob, and I was lucky to at least be able to drop his name because it was it was that that's how excited people were about his application. And uh, so I don't want again I don't want to steal too much of his thunder. I'll turn it over to uh, turn to Bob. When um, Sumac asked me to to come and do this, I uh, of course said absolutely, we'd be very pleased to do it. And then found out I'd be presenting with Salesforce. Uh, which in our world is a little bit intimidating. They're the 800-pound gorilla in, in cloud computing. It would be a little bit like you presenting to Warren Buffett, I think. Not if you were nothing. Exactly. <laughs> and so I did a little research. as what what does Boomi and Salesforce have in common? And so uh, here, here you have it. So in, in 2007, if you, don't, if you don't know the Cody Award. We also won two this year. <laughs> If you're not familiar with the Cody Award, it is our industry's equivalent of like winning an Oscar. You know, they have a big ceremony, you go up and get your trophy, it's, it's very exciting actually. And uh, so Salesforce won in 2007 uh, for, for the CRM software, they won in 2008 for force.com, and thankfully they didn't run in 2009, and, uh, and therefore we were able to slip in and, and, and win the Cody in 2009. Anyway, a little bit about uh, Boomi. Uh, we are actually one of those transformation companies uh, that uh, you, was just discussed. We were a traditional on-premise uh, integration software company started in 2000. Uh, again, we, we uh, started roughly the same time, a little, a little bit later. We, when we were building our business plan, we took a look at salesforce.com and we thought the whole 10 years, $1 billion was a bit too fast and we would scale up a little, a little slower. Uh, but we are the industry's first and leading integration cloud. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is, but we build an integration platform completely in, in SaaS. Uh, we have 600 clients globally now. Uh, we're venture backed by First Mark Capital right here in New York City. They've been awesome partners. Uh, and we've got offices in Philadelphia, and I get to spend quite a bit of time actually out, out in San Francisco. We have offices out there as well. So I, I share this with you because we talk about integration. I think most people would accept this. Uh, it is one of the top three, if not, I think the number one impediment to SaaS and cloud adoption. And if you look at this survey, you can see, you know, it is when people are looking at adopting SaaS, the concerns that they have, integration always comes up in, in that discussion. This is how we used to solve it. And this is meant to be this, the, uh, this, the scared straight, uh, straight uh, poster. This is what, e exactly, yeah. This is what Peter and I used to do for a living, actually. We coded this stuff. Uh, I was with EDS for 20 years, and we made a fortune out of uh, going in and doing this kind of thing uh, for, for our customers. And so this is what we're trying to, to move away from. And this is what we moved to. In 2006, we had an idea. Uh, when everyone else was out building applications as SaaS, we said, what if we built an integration platform completely as SaaS? And uh, uh, that's what we did. We, we actually went out and tried uh, to get it funded back then. Everyone said, what are you talking about? Why would anyone want an integration platform as SaaS? So we actually bet the company. We, we took all of our resources and, and we took them off of the, uh, the product that we had and in a year built from the ground up a, a true SaaS platform. We didn't take our product, stick it in a data center, virtualize it, and call it SaaS. We built it from the ground up as a true software as a service application. 
And we're able to integrate any combination of SaaS applications, cloud services, PaaS platforms, any application built on force.com with on-premise applications um, without software, without appliances. It's all done from a web browser uh, and, uh, and a very, very, very uh, convenient way to integrate. So I put this slide together because it's interesting. I think we, were, we touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, it's no longer enough to just say you're SaaS. When we get into conversations and, and people say, well, what value to bring? And I say, well, there's no maintenance. You don't have anything to uh, install and maintain. It costs a heck of a lot less. You get to buy by the, you know, buy the drink, pay for what you use. They say, yeah, 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 but what other benefits do, do, you, do you get? And I, you know, to me, it's always like sort of comparing a, a horse and a, and a Ferrari, you know? I mean, but, they, but you know, people that are the naysayers will say, well, they're both just modes of transportation, right? And I happen to like riding horses, and you see a lot more scenery that way, right? So that's the argument you get in. So I, took, <laughs> so I took some time, I said, okay, well, what are the benefits that actually come from being built completely in SaaS? And it turns out there is a lot of really cool things that happen. First of all, we have one worldwide ubiquitous network. So we now have people all over the world building integrations, um, and we're processing now 130 million transactions a month. That's doubling every four to five months. So we've got this sort of ubiquitous network that covers, covers the world. Uh, anyone can connect anything anywhere using anyone. We have a system integrator in Australia doing projects for customers in the US using a resource center out of Kuala Lumpur all from our cloud. Everybody working remotely, nobody doing anything on premise. The community aspect, so people can build integration connectors or process maps or widgets and things like this and share them with everybody else in the community. We're marrying up integrators and uh, application partners together. Works out really, really good. So I won't go through all of these, but just to give you a feel for some of the really uh, benefits and advantages of being SaaS. Ease of use. Now, we actually have this in our product. I mean, drag and drop, uh, you know, visual integration, as we called it. We've now moved this to the cloud, so you still do things visually. There's no coding involved. Um, and uh, you know, this is something a system administrator can do, a Salesforce administrator can do, a system admin, that type of person, as long as you understand sort of the file structure and, and, uh, and database structure. Enterprise grade, and this is important. I think a lot of people, uh, naysayers, competitors of SaaS will try to say, well, you know, it's uh, good for the lightweight stuff, but you really wouldn't want to use it for enterprise grade stuff. Uh, not the case. I mean, we have everything that uh, our enterprise, uh, uh, legacy enterprise competitors would have, things like infinite scalability, high availability, redundancy, failover, all those, all those types of things. Uh, we just uh, implement it in a, in a different way. And by the way, we've got, uh, we now have SOA support. We announced in spring, I don't know how many of you in here uh, work in large enterprises, you've invested a ton in SOA. Uh, if you now want to extend that to include SaaS applications as well as your on-prem applications, you can do that without having to drill holes in your firewall, which is a really cool thing. Uh, we are distributed on the next slide. Um, this is a very important uh, aspect of our architecture. So there's no single point of failure. Once we build an integration, it gets put into a little runtime engine we call an Atom. Atoms can be distributed anywhere on premise. They can be hosted in our cloud, Salesforce's cloud, Amazon's cloud, an Apprenda cloud. It doesn't really matter. Um, and uh, you know, the real key here is it's like the internet. There's no single point of failure. Um, there's no single choke point. A lot of our competitors have chosen to put one copy of their application in the cloud, route all the traffic through one, you know, one place, <laughs> and do the transformation and then send it on its way. We don't think that's a model that's very scalable. In fact, we don't think it's a, a very uh, robust model at all. The community aspect. So we recognize when, when we wrote the business plan that at some point our competitors would catch up, they would announce and launch SaaS uh, uh, cloud versions of integration of some sort. And so in the fall of 2008, we opened our platform. So now if there's an application that we don't support, there's a free SDK, people can download it, build a connector, publish it, and that app will immediately talk to every other application that we support uh, in our network. Um, the, uh, the notion of public and private communities, you can keep that asset to yourself, you can publish it to the entire Boomi community. If you do publish it, 
Uh, we actually give you an economic incentive to do so. There's a rev share every time that connector gets used. So it's kind of like open source, but we're sort of incenting people to, to do that. And just to talk again about some things that are unique to this model versus things you just cannot do with single tenant legacy integration products. Imagine this scenario. Salesforce changes their API, and these guys are the absolute best in the market. But about four times a year, they, they update their API. Most of the other guys change them about four times a week, a little harder to keep them up with them. But when they change their API, we change our connector one time. We publish that connector one time, and everybody globally gets that update immediately, uh, and everybody stays in lockstep with that, with that update. Contrast that with the legacy style, you would have to go to every instance of that integration product, find it, and update it. You will never keep up. The one fundamental belief we have, the one thing that we, the mantra you know, with Boomi is that you cannot scale multi-tenant architecture with single instance integration. It will become the rate limiting factor. Taking another cue from the Salesforce uh, playbook, we also just launched the industry's first uh, trust site for a cloud integration platform. We now have a website, trust.boomi.com, that you can go to, look at 30 days of our history of uptime, reliability, performance. Uh, that's a very scary step, I can tell you. Uh, I, okay. stayed, I stayed awake uh, for a few nights leading up to that announcement, but I think it's the absolute right thing to do, and I can tell you that it has definitely driven uh, behavior changes with, within Boomi in terms of uh, obviously the uh, sensitivity to, uh, to our performance and uptime. All right, so the last two things I wanted to talk about uh, was the impact of this to the enterprise, because you could argue that a lot of the traction that SaaS and particularly SaaS applications have had have been sort of in the SMB, you know, mid-market tiers. As SaaS and cloud computing now really start to take root in the enterprise, uh, it turns out that Having a cloud integration platform is actually a pretty cool thing, even for traditional on-premise integration. So even if you're not trying to integrate anything in the, in the cloud, uh, it turns out there's quite a lot of benefits of doing, uh, doing integration from the cloud. And the problem with traditional enterprise integration, traditional software products, is inside of the product, is or all the functions that you need to do for integration. So building, deploying, managing, as well as the execution. In reality, the only thing that needs to be distributed around the enterprise is the execution piece. But unfortunately, because when we were building single tenant software products, you had to copy everything. And so large enterprises end up running 10, 15, 20, 50 copies of these integration stacks around the enterprise. Well, what does that do? When you, it weakens governance, it weakens policy control, it weakens security. I mean, now that when you want to implement one sort of governance policy, just to take one example, you have to go to every instance of that software and, and make the update. Very, very hard to, to keep synchronized and, and keep together. Let's go to the next slide. So, turns out using Boomi for on premise integration is, is actually a very powerful thing because you centralize in one place the build and the deploy and the manage, and only the execution, the atom that I talked about earlier, gets distributed around the enterprise. So now you've centralized all of the security, the policy, the auditability, the reporting, the end-to-end -end visibility, all the problems that uh, arguably the integration industry has created for itself over the years, uh, you know, we've, we've greatly simplified. And I have a cool white paper coming out on that if you're into that subject. Uh, article just ran in ZDNet uh, this week, uh, take a look at it. But I think this is really very cool and sort of the next wave for where, for where Boomi will be heading. Uh, certainly the SMB and the market has been fun, but I think for all of us the real uh, payday is with, uh, with large enterprise. So that's it, the bottom line, uh, integration critical to cloud computing. I would argue as critical as virtualization, it's a fundamental building block. Uh, everybody knows cloud computing is set for explosive growth, and we're the only pure play uh, in the space. And uh, that's why uh, Somac and I have so many interesting conversations about Boomi. Thank you. <laughs>